Hey friend and welcome back to my channel. Today we are gonna be talking about a hot topic, something that I get asked often, which is how do I know the difference between my voice, the voice of the Lord and the enemy? It is a, a skill that we develop over time um, that I really think that a lot of us don't understand is a skill. And I don't think that we do a good job as leaders within the Christian community to say, hey, discernment is a skill. And you are going to have to have some, some foundation work to be able to build the gift of discernment. But as you continue to grow and as you continue to practice, okay, shout out to Alan Iverson and Jackie Hill Perry, who just dropped that, that album. It's fire. Um, but we have to build some practice in order for us to get better at the skill of discernment. The skill of discernment is not to be confused with the spiritual gift of discerning the spirits, but it is a skill that all of us can build and should build as we grow in Christ. How do I know? Because the Bible said so, okay? In Hebrews 5, 14, in the New American Standard Version of the Bible, it says, but solid food is for the mature who because of practice, okay, have their senses trained to discern good and evil. I want you to know that the first thing you need to do is give yourself some grace, friend, because practice is required. That means that you are going to have to follow the scripture in 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 and take every thought captive. That's how you practice. You have to take every thought captive and examine it against what I'm about to teach you. And when you do that, you are able to build your skill of discernment. I'm gonna read it again, Hebrews 5, 14, New American Standard Version, but solid food is for the mature who because of practice have their senses trained to discern good and evil. That's not the same as the gift of discerning the spirits, okay? Here's what I want you to understand. Second Corinthians 10 and 5 tells us that we are to take every thought captive and then we are to make the ones that try to exalt themselves submit to the word of God. If you are doing that, that means that you are being intentional and in thinking about what you're thinking about. A lot of us let our thoughts take us every which way but loose. And that's why you struggle and you don't have clarity. You have angst and worry unnecessarily that you don't need to have. And we take our discernment beyond the skill that God gave us. And that's where you move into doubt. Once your discernment goes beyond the boundary that God has given you, then you find yourself in the territory where doubt is plaguing you. And so you building the skill is going to be super helpful. So let's get to it. The first thing I want you to know is there are, are some themes here. And I wanna, I wanna lay this out to you in the beginning so you know what it is. Anytime God is speaking to you, there is a level of submission that is going to be required. God's word is always going to require submission. Anything that he says is always going to require submission. That means that you are going to have to get in alignment with what he's saying, get in alignment to, to uh, stop a behavior, start a behavior, have a conversation. And that's really important because a lot of times people think that every time God gives you a set of instruction, you're going to be excited about it and it's going to feel so good. Lie. Lie. Ask Jonah. God told that man to go to Nineveh. He was like, mm -mm. that doesn't mean that that wasn't God speaking to him. However, Jonah would have had, he had to submit to the instruction. So don't confuse your desire for God's direction, because that's not always a good indicator, okay? The theme, anytime God is speaking, is going to be submission. You have to submit that old mindset. You're gonna have to submit to this pruning. You're gonna have to submit to this discipline. You're gonna have to submit to doing video, Sharla. You're gonna have to submit, submit, submit. And through that, he's going to stand with you in your weaknesses. Okay, he's going to reveal things to you, but you know it's him if it's causing you to submit. Okay, 
that is different from your own voice where we are going to try to self-preserve, self-perseverance, okay? Self-preservation. I want to keep control. I want my desires. I'm gonna do what feels safe to me. And a lot of times what feels safe to me isn't in alignment with the Lord, so it makes it unsafe, okay? Anytime it's your voice, most times you are in control. There's a, a level of, of self-preservation. I'm going to do what feels good to me. I'm living in my truth, which is crazy because Jesus is the, the truth, okay? And so anytime it's me, it's typically because I'm trying to uh, slide down the slide. Y'all remember when we was kids, we used to slide down the slide with my hands. <laughs> now I got burned and it hurt and I'm getting shocked down the slide. And it, it's not a good ride because I want to be in control. Self-preservation is going to be that voice on the inside. And I mean self-preservation even from the Lord. That's different. I'm not saying don't use wisdom because the Lord don't have us out here being reckless. I'm saying typically the common theme when it's you is you are trying to take the path of least resistance, the path that costs you the least, the path that is not the hardest, the path that gives you what you desire and not necessarily the Lord's outcome. And because of that, you know that it's not God. And then the enemy is always going to lead you to self-destruction. He is going to make lies look good. He's going to distort. He's going to um, make things perverted. He is going to cause confusion and promote fear and condemnation. Okay? I want to break this down a little bit more for you guys, but I, I want you to have these major themes. God's voice is always going to require submission. Your voice is going to try to preserve. Okay? We are humans. We think we know everything, self-preservation, self-preservation, self-preservation. The enemy is going to cause you to self-destruct and going to position it in a way where it looked good. So you know good and well that lady gave you a 50 instead of a 20. And you're like, oh, it's a blessing. That is a lie. That's stealing. That's manipulation. That's not even self-preservation. You're not preserving that thing. You're lying and you're stealing. That's clearly not of God. And it, the 50 wasn't yours to begin with. Go take that money. Go take that woman back her money before she lose her job. Okay. Tell my old oh, God gave me a blessing. Come on, y'all. That's the enemy perverting. I pray that makes sense. Submission versus self-preservation versus self-destruction. So submission is going to require you to yield to the will, the will of God. And you're going to have to trust his plan. You're going to have to trust his plan even when it conflicts with your knowledge, your wisdom, your understanding. Okay? Submission stretches you. But in the outcome, you're going to have peace. That don't mean it's going to be easy. Okay? Jonah got swallowed by a whale because he wanted to be disobedient. But you're going to have peace. There's going to be growth. There's going to be clarity. God's going to have you go back sometimes and, and deal with some, some things. He's going to prune some things. But ultimately, there's going to be intimacy with the Lord. And God really uses submission to teach us to depend on him and for him to mold us into the image of Christ. God is not trying to mold you into the best version of yourself. God is trying to mold you into a representative, a, a copy of his son, Jesus Christ. Okay. So it's important that when we are trying to decipher what is, uh, what voice or who is speaking to us, what the goal is, that we have that perspective. And so some questions you can ask yourself is, am I resisting this because it's difficult? Hmm. Am I resisting this because God is calling me to trust him more? Or is this something that's really unwise and dangerous? Not does it feel dangerous? Is it dangerous? Am I resisting this because I don't have control? And then you can ask yourself, what biblical principles support this direction? God is never going to contradict his written word ever. So what I love about this is that you're always going to be able to fact check. 
God is never going to contradict his written word. So God will never tell you to go and rob a bank. Because, okay. So while it seems like the answer to your problems, we know it's the enemy because you are going to be destructed. Like they gonna find you in the money, friend. Okay. And so as you are praying, you want to pray and ask God for discernment. You want to ask him to give you the strength to surrender to his will. And you want to ask God to really show you in his word where he is bringing you into alignment with his will and where you're learning more about his character. And I love these two scriptures. John 10, 27 says, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Okay. It's not just enough to hear him, but you got to hear and follow. And then um, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to your own understanding, which is our next portion. So my own voice, I'm trying to preserve me. It's my desire. I need control. I need safety. I need to feel secure instead of knowing that I'm secure in the Lord. And so a lot of times it keeps us stepping out of faith and not trusting God fully. What's a good example? Sarah and them. God said, I'm going to give you a son. She tried to self-preserve for her own image. Um, back then in context, not having a child was shameful. And so she was like, go sleep with my maidservant. How do we know that that's not the Lord? Okay. It, it's actually, she was listening to herself and the enemy because she took control of the situation. And then in that, there's adultery happening. Go sleep with this woman. And then we see the outcome or the fruit of that was a hot mess express. Okay. Self-preservation. It usually leads us to do things that are out of pocket, um, that are that can leave us stagnant, that causes us to miss opportunities. And what really God is trying to do is in those moments where we are uncomfortable, we are learning to lean on him. We have to learn how to be exposed and vulnerable in our relationship with him. We are not doing life for God. We are doing life with him, meaning that you're not going to be in control all the time. Meaning that, yeah, girl, he knew that you didn't have the money when he told you to do it. Or he knew that it would take you some skill and some understanding. He knows your weaknesses and he's telling you to do it anyway. And so it's in those weaknesses that you get to really learn more about his strength, his love for you and his care for you. Okay. That's how you know it's you if you're trying to self-preserve. And so you need to ask yourself, is my hesitation driven by fear or lack of trust? Or am I choosing this path because it's easier than God's will? This makes more sense to me. Just because it makes sense don't mean it's from the Lord. Because it's the to you part. If God's thoughts and ways are higher and better than ours, then we have to rely on him. And so I want you to really identify if you're struggling with self uh, preservation. If those thoughts, you see that pattern a lot. I want you to identify where the fear is coming from. Like, God, why do I not trust you? Is it because of relationships that I've had with my earthly parents? That's real. I, I don't like, oh, I just don't ask nobody for help. Well, that's what God is trying to show you. And that's why he's going to keep putting you in position where you have to rely on him because you have to develop that skill. Submission and dependence is a part of this. You're not a strong, independent black woman with the Lord. We don't have to be. I'm not. I'm not a strong, independent black woman before the Lord. I'm just his child. Okay? Okay. Um, and then I want you to continue to pray for courage to do things, even when they feel uncomfortable, like recording YouTube videos or going back to school or all the other 50 million, 100 things that God has called me to do. And I've done it uncomfortable. I've done it without having the, the totality of what's on the other end. Because honestly, if God showed us the big picture, we wouldn't do it because it would seem even more outlandish. Okay. And then I want you to make sure that you are fasting and spending time in the word. If you're dealing with a lot of thoughts that are your own, your self, your, those self-preservation thoughts, I want you to fast because you have to deny your flesh and really start to crucify it. So that way you can hear from the Lord more clearly. And so Proverbs 14 and 12 says that there's a way that seems right to man, but its end 
is a way to death. Okay. All right. And then Matthew 6, um, 25 through 34 tells us to be anxious for nothing, but in all things, okay, that we are supposed to pray and with supplication, ask the Lord for what we need. And we need to build a relationship with him and submit to him enough that we know that whether or not we get what we want, his will is better than mine. And a lot of times we don't trust the Lord simply because we're not getting what we want. That is not the goal in this. The goal is that we do what he wants. Okay. And then finally, self-destruction. Okay. Little Lucy coming in, telling you lies, distorting the truth, um, doing what he did to Eve. Oh, God just doesn't want you to have, making it seem as if God is withholding things from you. And so now you're going outside of him and doing new age practices and all kinds of stuff to get something that wasn't even his good for you. It wasn't good for you. Okay, look at the garden. Completely provided for, had all your bills paid, all the food that you need. God set a boundary and said, hey, this is not for you. This is for me. Why? Because he's the father. This ain't for you to know. Stay in a child's place. Okay. Here comes the enemy. Oh, God just doesn't want you to have that because he is withholding from you. And we, we bite the fruit. Self-destruction. Look at us now. So we went from submitted, walking with the Lord, self-preservation of like, I don't know. Did he say, mm, why are we even talking to the serpent? Okay. And then self-destruction because it's presented in a way, the thought is presented in a way that it's the best option. It's the option that is going to give you what you need, but really there's a lot of doubt, there's condemnation, there's fear, there's not peace. And it often is gonna to lead to sin, brokenness, guilt, and separation from the truth of God. And so we have to make sure that we are allowing the Lord to expose those things so we can repent, OK, even in the moments where we are feeling doubtful or if we are dealing with destruction, know that if you make a mistake, friend, God allows for us to repent, meaning your mind has to change. That means the way that you think about that thing, you can't do it again. OK, David couldn't have bathed Sheba more than once. He bathed Sheba once. It cost him a lot. He didn't bath Sheba twice. OK. So true repentance is available to us if you, if you don't get it right, but then we have to learn from it. And the way that we can build that discernment is asking, does this thought align with scripture or is there fear? Is there confusion? And is this thought making me doubt the promises of God, doubt his character or doubt my identity in Christ? If that is the case, then you follow 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. You take that thought captive and then you make it submit to the word of God. That means you're going to have to get into the Bible. And that's why I say that this is a skill that once you identify it, it's not enough to identify where this came from, where this voice came from. It's not enough to, to identify, oh, okay, that's the devil. And then be sitting there chilling with him. No, you got to put him out. He got He got to get exterminated. And so that means that you're going to have to be intentional about pulling out your phone or um, opening your app and going and finding the scripture that you need within context to properly combat that, that issue. Because how does thought get in here? Who am I talking to in, in the physical world where the enemy has me ruminating on these thoughts? What videos am I watching? Wh where is this coming from? Where is this coming from? Once you are able to develop that skill and you do it a little bit, it'll get easier and easier and easier. And the stakes may feel higher as you continue to grow, but the principles are still the same. The voice of God is going to cause you to submit. If it's you, you are going to be looking to self-preserve. If it's the enemy, he wants you to self-destruct. So I pray that this blessed you, that it helped you, friend. I love you. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do a part two, if you need me to expound, if you have questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. But I love you, friend. God bless you. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.